Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills, this is Brock Shimano. Today is Thursday the 16th and we add the grains, a little bit of a divergence here in price action. Corn for July delivery trading down nine and a quarter cents. Beans trading up 14 and three quarter cents. Wheat Chicago down six cents and Kansas City wheat trading down eight and a quarter cents. Now it is kind of an interesting trade today, Brock. What is the reason behind it? You know what, early on in the trade we did start off on relatively even footing. Uh, both grains were up slightly, corn and soybeans. But as the day progressed, I think uh, corn really ended up going down quite a bit lower, soybeans heading quite a bit farther to the, uh, the positive side. And I think the ideas out there is that we've had a pretty nice planting window here recently. The weather's been very good for planting progress. I think that's putting the pressure on the corn market putting a premium back into the soybean market and the idea is that not as many acres are going to be switching over to soybeans now so we're going to have less soybean supply than what we thought even just a week ago. So really it's 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 about the weather that we've been seeing and, and been experiencing because really the warmness has, has improved the soil temperatures enough that uh, over 50 degrees throughout the majority of the corn belt. So now we have soil temperatures that are able to sustain uh, you know, growth and development for corn. And not only that, but we've had hot weather, uh, relatively dry weather, a real planting window. And of course that means that some of the acres that uh, we were concerned about that may have if, if we were continuing to be delayed, may have switched into soybeans, you're saying now that, uh, that you know, maybe it, it's not so uh, dire of a situation. Yeah, you know, I think those concerns are starting to be alleviated. Um, you know, looking at forward to uh, Monday's crop progress report, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, a lot of the analysts are expecting 50 to 60 percent of the crop, uh, corn crop, to be planted. So that's going to alleviate quite a bit of the concerns if we jump about 30 percent in one week. Yeah, absolutely, and that that'll be a, a large jump, biggest jump throughout the year. Obviously, we only had 28 percent um, as of last week. And, uh, and man, if we get another 30%, that will uh, move us right along. Of course, now, uh, keep in mind that in terms of weather, from Saturday to w Wednesday of next week, we're really going to have more showers, and that's going to renew some of the flooding threats uh, throughout the Midwest. And, uh, and of course, that'll continue to delay planting. So we have a nice little window until Saturday, and then Saturday to Wednesday, it should slow down again. And, uh, and that may hurt the next week's uh, planning progress report. But Brock, you know, we also had the export sales come out this morning and, and it didn't seem to affect the market a whole lot, but uh, where does it leave us in terms of meeting the USDA expectations? You know, Cody, over the last couple of days we have had quite a bit of fundamental information come out. We had Nova Crush yesterday, we had ethanol numbers yesterday, this morning we had export sales. Seems like the market's kind of shrugging that off and really paying attention to the weather, but let's, let's do take a, take a quick look at what the export sales were like this week. Uh, for wheat, uh, we came in right within the analyst expectations at 125,000 metric tons sold on the old crop. Uh, old crop soybeans saw just 15,000 metric tons, so not very good sales for wheat, or excuse me, for soybeans once again. And for corn, we came in at the high end of expectations on the old crop at 219,000 metric tons. Let's take a look at the model we've been following all marketing year long. If you look here, uh, the red line is the seasonal pace we need to see uh, to meet the current USDA projection, uh, and these are the corn export sales. Uh, the blue bars are what we are actually seeing for weekly sales, so you can see we did fall a little bit short of that weekly pace uh, to meet the current USDA projections of just uh, 750 uh, million bushels leaving the country this year. Um, that leaves us about 7 million bushels behind on that pace for this current market year, so we're going to have to pick up uh, just a little bit more to even meet the most, re most recently revised uh, USDA expectations. Take a look at soybeans though, uh, we continue to fall uh, b behind on the seasonal pace to meet the current USD projections. Uh, once again this week, um, you know, that last bar there is barely even uh, on this chart, uh, only 15,000 metric tons like I said earlier. Uh, but for the year we're still about 62.5 million bushels ahead, but we are falling rather drastically. Just in the last four or five weeks alone we've fallen from 110 million bushels ahead down to 62.5 million bushels ahead. And I have to believe that most of that pressure is coming from uh, South American crop uh, getting into the pipeline pipelines getting on the world market. Um, just before we came on air here I saw that uh, Buenos Aires Green Exchange actually put their harvest at 90% complete on their soybean harvest. So those beans are heading into the market and causing some pressure on ours. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, two of the last four uh, USDA export sales reports, we saw net reductions in uh, in the export sales. And so, you know, obviously we were very fast ahead of pace because of the, uh, the crop failures in South America last year, and it really pushed all the business onto our books. We really were doing some serious exporting, but now that the... Uh, South America has their crop, uh, for the most part, harvested. Uh, we are really struggling to get 
get any sort of uh, sales traction uh, to finish off this marketing year strong. Other than that, that wraps up this afternoon's show. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And remember, if you have any questions about the services that we provide, give us a call at 877-472-4607 or you can shoot us an email. Thanks a lot for joining. See you tomorrow.